All right, good evening. Welcome back to our Old Testament studies as we pick back up in the Exodus story. Chapter 7, Moses and Aaron are about to go in and confront Pharaoh. God has to keep reassuring Moses that he's up to the task that God's called him to do, which is a big one, to go in and confront the greatest superpower on earth. So chapter 7, And the Lord said to Moses, See, I've made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. This means Moses is going to be the number one man, and Aaron's going to be his uh, spokesperson. Moses is going to tell him what to say, and Moses is going to be the one who's uh, hearing from God, although God speaks to both of them here in a minute. But Moses is uh, getting Aaron to talk for him. But even though he's going to be like a god to Pharaoh, God reminds him, I'm the one that's really in charge the next verse. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee. You give him what I tell you. You give him God's word. And Aaron, your brother, will speak to Pharaoh that he send the children of Israel out of his land. Now, Pharaoh don't want to turn loose his labor force, but uh, it's going to come to the point where he's ready to send them out, not just turn them loose, get rid of them. And God says, I'll harden Pharaoh's heart. And you'd say, well, did God do that to him? Well, Pharaoh was just like you and I. He, he was a creature of free will. God allows us free will. We can... Uh, we can uh, choose to be on God's side or we can choose to uh, rebel against God and when we rebel against God that makes our heart harder so I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt but Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you he won't listen because God's got foreknowledge he knows what's going to happen already right Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt bring the plagues bring forth mine armies and You'll bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgment. God says, I'm going to bring my people out of there. Sometimes you hear people say, well, we're all God's children. Well, as far as we're all creative, created beings of God's, that's true. But as Jesus made it very clear, there's two families on this earth. There's God's people, and then there's the devil's people. There ain't no in-between, either in one family group or the other one. That's John 8, 44 when Jesus told the religious leaders of his day that you are of your father, the devil, because they were all bragging about they were children of Abraham and part of God's family. Well, here you find out that Israel is God's people, and he's going to bring them out of Egypt, and God's recognized them Egyptians ain't my people. They belong to the devil, don't they? So Pharaoh won't listen. God says, but I'll bring you out by great judgments. Verse 5, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. In other words, the judgments that they're about to see and everything that God's mighty hand is going to be a witness against them. They'll know too who the Lord is. The Egyptians shall know that I'm the Lord, not all them myriad of lords that they were serving now. When I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, so did they. And I hope you are too. And Moses was four score years old. He is 80 years old before he started doing what he was born to do, really. God's been training him for 80 years. Now he's going to spend uh, the next 40 years uh, doing what God's trained him for 80 years to do. Moses was 80. Aaron, four score and three. Mo Aaron was older than Moses by three years, which explains why Aaron wasn't fed to the crocodiles. See, that law was passed after Aaron was probably three years old, and Moses' time comes along. And when they were spake to Pharaoh, that's how old they was at the beginning, 80 and 83. And the Lord spake to Moses and Aaron, saying, verse 9, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, God even knew what he was going to say in his foreknowledge. Pharaoh's going to say, Show a miracle for you. Then shalt thou say to Aaron, Take your rod, Cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent, a snake. And Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. A, mir a miracle. The, that old stick, he threw it down, and it became a snake. So then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. They threw down their sticks, their staffs, 
and they became snakes also. For they cast down every man his rod. See, there's two powers at work in this world, ain't there? There's God's power and Satan's power. But hold that thought. They cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Or as you, know, you want it in New Testament language from 1 John, greater is he that was within you than he that's in the world. There's two powers, but God's power is greater. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them. As the Lord had said, and it's always that way, it'll always be as the Lord has said. And the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart's hardened, he refuses to let the people go. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goes out to the water. God says he's going down to the river in the morning, take his morning bath. And thou shalt stand by the river's brink, against he come. And the rod, which was turned to a serpent, shall thou take in thy hand. Remember, he picked it back up. He already went through that. God trained him, right? Threw it down, it became a snake. Then when he picked it back up by the tail, it became a, a staff again. Remember the history of that rod, staff, stick. Moses said uh, he couldn't serve God, didn't have nothing to serve God with. God says, what's that in your hand? A stick. It was potential. God's using what he's got in mighty ways. God will use what you've got to offer to the Lord too. And verse 16, the Lord says, you'll say to him, when he comes down to take a bath here or there on the riverbank, you give him God's words, what God's telling him here. The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee, saying, let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. You wouldn't listen so far, but you better, because it's going to get worse. Thus saith the Lord, verse 17, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that's in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they'll be turned to blood. Now remember, the Egyptians worshipped everything as a god. One of their major gods was the Nile River. They, they considered the Nile a god, the giver of life. They were out there in the middle of the desert, and they depended upon the Nile River for everything. It was their, their drinking water. It was their source for their crops. So without it, there'd just be sand. And here it is about to turn to blood. The giver of life is about to become death to them. And the fish that's in the river will die. The river will stink. And the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spake to Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take your rod, stretch out your hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And so in the, in the house that's going to turn to blood, the wood and the stone vessels of hot of water, the pools, the ponds, the, the river, Evidently, there's some other stuff, though, because it didn't turn to blood. And Pharaoh's magicians did a funny thing here, too. The devil's always imitating God. Remember that. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up the rod, and he smote the waters in the river in the sight of Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh's down there for his morning bath, apparently. And in the sight of Pharaoh's servants that come with him, and all the waters that were in the river turned to blood. If he's in there getting a bath, I bet he come running out of there, don't you? And the fish that was in the river died, the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Now here's a funny thing that happened. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. Not only could they turn their stick to a snake, but whatever water was left anywhere, it's almost like cutting your nose off a spot of your face. They turned it to blood. See, we can do that too. Apparently they couldn't turn it back and they couldn't reverse what God had done though, or they would have. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them. As the Lord had said, and Pharaoh turned and went to his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. And all the Egyptians digged round about the river for water to drink. There wasn't anywhere else. So everybody got out there and they knew they got to have water. So they all started trying to dig whales. For they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days, like God said, a week of this judgment is going to happen. So for seven days, all that water was blood. Seven days were fulfilled. 
And after that, after that, the Lord had smitten the river. But that's not all. That's just the beginning of the plagues. There's 10 of them. We're going to work our way through them. See you next week. <laughs>